Hello, this is Bob from ShopCenturyAutoAir.com. Today's video uh, is going to explain some things that we get a lot of calls into the shop and emails uh, about confusion about installing compressor shaft lip type seals. So we're going to start with a brief description and what's front and back and how they're put in and then we'll do a couple run throughs of them. First of all, some shaft seals load from the front of the cylinder head and are held in by a snap ring. Others are held in through the back side of the cylinder head and then also held in with a snap ring. However, the compressor itself has to be opened up to get to that seal, whereas a front loading one, you can take the clutch off and it's right there. How can you tell the difference before you get into this? Well, once the clutch is off, you'll see that there's a snap ring visible when you look down the nose of the compressor, whereas on the back loading, that snap ring, you won't see it. So, the next thing, the different types of, of shaft seals, uh, being of the lip type, um, all work the same way, but they have a couple notable differences. Some have a molded neoprene around the outer edge of it that seals it into the housing. Some have an O-ring that's on the seal itself. And in the case of most of your GM ones, the O-ring is not on the seal. It's actually installed into the compressor itself. So even though they all pretty much work the same way, there's slight differences. And there's so many different compressors that we can never get into absolutely every variation. It's something you just got to get apart and take a look and see what you have. So. Um, the next thing I would like to go over that is the number one question is what is the front and the back of a lip seal? The way a compressor shaft seal or lip seal works is the actual center section of it goes around the crankshaft on the compressor. So as that crankshaft spins, the seal stays stationary and it rides on a, on a microfilm of oil, and that's what seals the refrigerant in. The outer edge is, is a static seal that seals it to the housing itself. So if you look at the seal, the way it's designed, there's a, there's a hump to it. And even with the GM, it's a little less visible, but you'll see that hump inside there. The rule of thumb is that that protruding section, or the hump, always goes into the compressor. Why? Well, if you installed it the other way, refrigerant would be pushing up and spreading that and the refrigerant would come out. When it's in this way, the refrigerant pushes on that seal and seals it to that shaft. So if you look at the seal you have and imagine it that way, that should answer the questions a little bit. Also, if you look at the seal themselves, Oftentimes you'll see a steel, more steel exposed outer section and that would be the outer edge. But really look at that section itself. When you have them apart, if it's visible, always look at the shaft as well. Feel it, make sure there's no wear, like it's, it's worn a ridge in it. Um, if there's a little bit of buildup, you can take like a Scotch-Brite pad and cover the compressor and kind of dress it up a little bit and that'll help it seal as well. So, the next thing to do with a shaft seal to aid in installation is kind of a, a preconditioning, if you will, of the seal. To install one, it's a mandatory thing to have an installer tool. If you don't have this tool, you will cut it, putting it in. Um, we get a lot of people buy the seals and say, I don't want to pay for, for that tool, or I may have it. And then a week later, they're ordering another seal because they find out that you absolutely have to have that tool to install it. So what we do is if you look at the, a brand new seal versus a used seal, you'll see that that inner ridge is very tight and it's, it's difficult to get it over the larger shaft. So we take a little bit of oil and we put it on the intersection of that seal and on the installer tool. Take it and run it over, this is actually backwards, over that tool, and that will stretch that lip seal out. And just kind of gently work it over the tool, 
and that gives it like a little bit of a preconditioning to get it on there. So we're going to take our seal, get it started down into that cylinder head. Get it in there as far as you can by hand. And make sure you're not cutting that o-ring. You'll feel something's not right. And you can take a socket that matches the outside diameter nicely and just push it down. You'll feel it seat down into the housing. This one's actually retained by an o-ring. There's a few or a snap ring. There's a few compressors that don't have um, that. Look at your snap ring. Snap rings always have a bevel on one edge and flat on the other. Bevels always face toward you. Install the snap ring. Make sure it's seated. If you look in there, there's our bulge in the seal facing inward. So. To install that cylinder head, we now take our installer tool, put it over the compressor, and you can see how it does is it makes sure the cone expands that seal down over the shaft and avoids the splines on it. I oil them up real good. You cannot use too much oil. This is just regular mineral, AC mineral oil. Take your cylinder head. I put my hand here just so that the thing doesn't drop and damage something on a compressor, kind of wiggle the head over it, work it down, and that's it seated on there. And take your tool out, and that's all there is to that one. You can put your compressor back together and bolt it back up. In the case of GM compressors, uh, or front-loading compressors, um, it's even easier. But with GM compressors, the one thing, that, like we talked about, there's not an O-ring around it. The kits will actually have two O-rings in them. One's a thicker O-ring, one's a, a, a thinner O-ring. You match what came out, what comes out of yours. 90% of them are the thin O-ring. There's only a few later model ones that use that large one. I've only seen it used a couple times. So inside the housing is actually a groove for that snap ring, or for the uh, O-ring. And it's just a matter of working that O-ring down into the groove and when there's a shaft in here, when this is on the compressor, it's not as easy as it just looked. So you'll have to take like a blunt instrument or very carefully with a screwdriver and just kind of work that snap ring down into that seal. Then you would lubricate that seal or the O-ring. And once again, let's do an R precondition on the shaft seal itself. There's the outer edge that faces us. There's the inner edge with the bulge that goes down onto the shaft. We want to precondition this seal, so we run it over essentially backwards, push it down, expand it, pull our lip seal out. Now when this is on the compressor, it'll be a shaft sticking through. We'll put that down just like we did on the other compressor and work it down forward. Once it's down in there, take a socket, push it until you feel it kind of seat down into the, into the housing. Um, and then a snap ring with the bevel facing out. A lot of kits will have felt washers. I don't actually use the felt washers. They have a habit of coming apart and getting caught up in the seal. If the seal's sealing tight, it's really not an issue. Um, so that, that's the primer on the, the questions we get the most on installing lip type seals, front loading, rear loading. Um, and we do sell these seals on our website, shopcenturyautoair.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.